Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to share with you what is on my duty belt as a police officer in 2020. My name is Melissa. I have been a police officer for 12 and a half years. I'm currently a lieutenant in a large metropolitan police department. I'm going to go through each item on my gun belt and give you an explanation of what it is, what it's used for, and also my personal commentary on some of these items as well as some honorable mentions that I personally don't keep on my duty belt, but I always keep on me when I am working. So I'm gonna get right into this video. I wanted to share quickly too, for those of you who don't know. So a police officer's gun belt is attached to an under duty belt. Then the belt keepers go through both this belt underneath and then your gun belt on top. And I would highly recommend a belt that is not like this. This belt is super stiff, it's very thick. This is meant for something more like with a training uniform. I do recommend, however, a belt that is extremely flexible that can close with Velcro and no kind of buckle in the front because you are not gonna have space for that. This is everything that's on my duty belt and I'm going to go through each of these items and explain them to you. Back to this side. So the first thing I'm gonna point out is that this is a leather duty belt. I do like how tight of a fit and clasp that you get with the plain leather belt when you're on the ground fighting, tussling, or just fighting, tussling in general. I haven't had it move around that much on me with this one. The next thing is my magazine holder. This holds 17, let's see if I can get to focus, 17 nine millimeter rounds and then there are two of those in a magazine holder the next thing on my belt is my taser there is a very interesting documentary called killing them safely that was done about the taser and the taser company it's i think it's on hulu right now but if you are interested in learning more about the taser it was very interesting for me to see it especially after carrying this weapon for so long i was able to learn a lot that i hadn't learned about it and i thought i knew a lot but with the taser 7 we also have additional cartridges that are on the side i haven't seen many other departments carrying these at least not in my area but unfortunately it's right by my radio it hits over and that is the button to activate i'm speaking on the radio so sometimes it sets that off this is the taser itself it is a little more compact than our previous tasers and again this is a taser 7 guys this is nothing secret you can easily go on the tasers website and find more information or just google tasers and find more information about them and inside of here i have two close range cartridges and the ones that are in my backup are long range you can you know what i'll just show you so if i remove the cartridges that are currently in my taser these are our close range cartridges and then we also have long range you can combine them and operate with a close range and a long range in your taser. I did just have this training and they were very adamant about training enough with it to actually be effective with it in the field. I haven't had the time to do that. So for now, I'm just gonna operate with my two close range and then my two long range. And these will work in different situations. You just may have to, if you can and are able, move yourself. If you're interested in knowing more about what it's like to get tased, make sure that you check out my Police Academy Experience video, which I'll have up shortly. Kind of a nerd, if you can't tell. So the next item on here is my radio. And this is just a Motorola radio. My department has an electronic maintenance unit that is available a lot i know that they are not completely on morning watch which is where i am right now but they do run for part of it at least so it's really nice if you have a problem with your radio you can go down there and get somebody to take a look at it figure out what's wrong maybe get you a new one or get it updated or whatever it might need and then on a supervisor's radio there's typically a keypad where you can make phone calls with it the next thing i have is a set of handcuffs i also keep additional handcuffs in my duty bag um, as a supervisor i'm definitely out on the street but the likelihood of me needing more than one isn't super likely because i'll typically have um, other people out there already but i also carry a large amount of zip ties in my duty bag as well so we've got plenty of options i know that some departments carry 
um, ones that are kind of just stuck together but I think that these are easier for people to kind of be able to get themselves in a comfortable place instead of forcing their arms and hands into that one position that's just my opinion especially after working with them in the Academy handcuffing others it's still, I feel like these are more comfortable for people, even though metal on your wrists and bones is never comfortable, but more comfortable and possibly others. My next item on here is my flashlight. It also does this cool, whoa, <laughs> blinking light. That's actually good for getting people's attention or distracting an animal or a person. It just depends on the situation. The next thing I have is my Aspaton. I'm not going to take it out, but these are metal sticks basically that can do a lot of damage. The next thing I have on here behind my gun is my handcuff key. I carry a lighted handcuff key. I mean, I've worked every single watch in my department and I've never encountered a situation where I'm not dealing with the dark at some point. So whether it's a day watch in the extremely early morning hours, evening watch going past sunset and then morning watch obviously overnight, um, a lighted handcuff key is always a plus because you have a way of easily seeing the holes in the handcuffs to unlock them if you don't have natural light or you're not in a building. The next thing I have is my duty weapon. My department carries the Glock 17 Gen 4. I am not a gun knot, but I really do enjoy Glocks. Um, my last duty weapon was a Smith & Wesson. It was a lot more difficult to shoot. This specific weapon just seems easier. It's super easy to take apart, put back together, and it also has a super light trigger pull. On the front of this, I also have a device that's been added when I get to my little honorable mention. So when I remove my weapon, my body camera will automatically start recording if it's not already on. And this next item, I'll see if I can do it one-handed, but there's a lot going on here. So I just took each of these items out of here so I could show them to you guys. The first thing I have is this quick clot combat gauze. And then I also have this emergency trauma dressing and that can be used to wrap anything that you want to stop bleeding. Also in my little kit are two of these hyphen chest seals. And this can be used on a part of the chest if there's trauma there, such as a gunshot wound. That's something that we see frequently. And then also a tourniquet. It was so cool in my class, we learned how to apply these one-handed to ourselves with our non-dominant hand. I'm not sure if I mentioned that there's just some gloves in here. I'm not gonna pull them out because it'd be really hard to get them back in there, but gloves. I also carry those in my duty bag, but they're there. Frequently, we are at calls before fire rescue or our local EMS arrives. Having something to be able to put on people to try to help them before real medical professionals arrive is fabulous. I feel that these are going to start popping up on more police officers' duty belts in the near future. So the next thing and the last thing that I have on my duty belt is my OC. Again, if you want to hear more about getting OC'd or my experience with it, some tips for you. If you're going to be getting OC'd, make sure you check out that Police Academy experience video, which I will have up very shortly. I also keep on there just so I can easily access it, my morning band. Unfortunately, many police officers do die in the line of duty, and that's just where I keep it so that there's easy access to it. So my honorable mentions I was actually thinking of were gonna be a tourniquet, which I also do carry one in my pocket. But then in addition to that is my body cam. I remember when body cams first came out, I had police for so long without them. We were just starting to get in car cameras when I was still on the street and I wasn't a huge fan of the idea, but since working now with body cams for probably the last four years, I think we've had them about four years, four or five years. They are so instrumental in so much that we do and checking on calls, checking on what people did, what people said. Um, it also really helps in investigations within our criminal investigations units. If we're not actually out there on the call and we're following up with it, we can see exactly what victims and witnesses said, exactly what officers did on scene, how scenes were processed. Well, I absolutely love them and I wish we would have had them a long time ago. But obviously this is not on my gun belt. I wear it on the front of my uniform. Also, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below and I will see you in my next video.